Hey, it looks like we're live. My favorite Facebook group, my healthy eating and lifestyle transformation help group. So this is your guys' group. You post questions, you post challenges, post funny stuff, all things healthy and fitness. Use this group to your maximum. Come back, visit, meet people, conversate with people, talk to people. There's tons of value inside of this group. Check out unit uh, and also just post questions truthfully and engage with others, meet other people that are on the same journey as you. Uh, there was a great post by Travis uh, this week that I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about. Let me move my phone out of the way. But it was the one that said, um, what's the first thing you think of when you see this refrigerator? And it's kind of funny that he posted that and then I posted, I think the same day, what's in your grocery cart. Um, but his post got a lot, a lot of comments and a lot of feedback. So I kind of want to talk about it today. I didn't ask you guys what to talk about. It seems like I get crickets anyway. So <laughs> I thought I would mention this one because it did get 62 comments and growing. But let's be honest. Whose refrigerator really looks like that? You know, everybody that commented on there was pretty much hating on the post, but I know some households have refrigerators or cabinets or pantries that is packed full of this colorful, bright, shiny packaged food. I know that they're out there. Um, you can't tell me, and I suppose I wouldn't, I suppose if that was my refrigerator, I probably wouldn't say, hey, that's me. Um, I totally get it, but it is, it's a problem. It really is a problem you know oftentimes I talk to people that are you know like oh I don't have the money I can't afford to eat healthy yes you can for 20 bucks a day you can eat healthy you can have a body like mine um, and not go deprivation you don't have to deprive yourself you don't have to be miserable you don't have to be on a diet it's a lifestyle um, and my refrigerator does not look like that uh, not at all. <laughs> uh, so I did look up some statistics. Uh, fast food. If you look, okay, so here's, here's one of the things that I thought was interesting. So if you figure, Americans typically, on average, spend $5 a day in fast food. Now that's either soda, that could be candy, that's fast grab and go food. So it's not fast food as in McDonald's or whatever, but you know, just fast, easy junk food, they spend an average of $5 a day. But you multiply that by seven, $35 a week, that's almost $2,000 a year in just crap food. Stuff that's empty calories, high in sugar, high in sodium, high in fat, high in all this bad stuff for us. So that's crazy. It's like $2,000 a year wasted, right? Um, the average American spends on fast food, um, well, $2,000, I already said that, but 58% eat fast food, actually fast food at fast food restaurants one time a week. 58% of Americans, so it's over half. I would say because of COVID, I think it's higher than that because I drive by several fast food restaurants a day and see the line is huge. Uh, but anyways, this statistic that I looked up was 50% Americans eat fast food one times a week. 80% um, of Americans visit fast food restaurants at least once a month. I think that's probably about right, right? 24% of Americans eat three or more fast food um, in a week. 24%. I know of clients that eat fast food more than one time a, a day. They do. Like they go through the line, through the line, through the line. It's so bad for you guys. It's so bad for you. Uh, there was one statistic that I thought was alarming. Kids age 12 to 19 eat two times as many calories from fast food than those of kids 2 to 11. Two times as much calories. That's insane. 80% of kids say McDonald's is their favorite place to go out to eat. What are you guys cooking your kids? What are you feeding your families? You gotta set the example. Oftentimes, the biggest thing that I hear from moms is like, oh, I don't wanna have to cook two different meals. Don't cook two different meals. 
don't cook a healthy lean protein cook a vegetable or don't cook a vegetable have a salad or whatever raw who knows whatever your choices are and then you can have something on the side that maybe you don't partake in but your family does because they're used to that maybe the macaroni and cheese maybe the stuffing maybe that's what i did for the first year and i didn't eat that helping that serving and then they started noticing my body change and then they stopped i started throwing it away so i was stopped cooking it um so and another statistic that i thought was interesting is one meal at a fast food restaurant is all the calories we need in just one meal the daily recommended amount of calories is in that one meal at that fast food restaurant and it takes three hours to walk off 1300 calories are you walking three hours a day probably not um, and 60 percent of americans are overweight is based on that statistic i didn't look at what year that was but um it's bad we have a problem houston um so yeah learning to eat healthy i think the biggest thing the one thing i really like about that picture is your environment your environment needs to be clean your environment needs to be free of all those foods because here's the other thing i run into a lot is a lot of my clients especially when i first start working with them they'll say oh i don't have time i don't have time and they're only eating one or two or three times a day and what ends up happening is you get super hungry and you go to the refrigerator because you haven't planned you haven't prepared you open up the refrigerator and you see all these bright shiny objects these bright colors and you're gonna make a bad choice because you're super hungry you'll eat anything and whatever's quick fast easy and cheap and it's right there so no you need to have uh foods that are available that are healthy at all times that are good for you and none of these bright colored shiny objects that have high fat high sodium high um carbohydrates high sugar get them out of your household get them out of your house and here's the thing, you know, is knowing what you're going to eat 24 hours in advance always. Some of my clients know what they're going to eat for the whole week. Like they plan, plan their weeks out a week in advance. Um, and that's great. That's fantastic. So, hi, John. Hi, Jessica. Is using stevia and coffee a sweetener okay? I was told it's better than sugar. Here's the thing. All sweeteners have a downside to them. Um, you know, if you can go without, I would recommend it. I do. Um, I have for probably, I would say 12 years now, gone without sweeteners in my coffee. I actually took a trip to Rome, had a beautiful, wonderful time, and actually dove into the culture and learned how to drink coffee straight up. And ever since then, I kicked the habit. I used to drink the caramel macchiatos and all those sweet, sweet things, um, but uh, no regrets. But sweeteners, um, it often... Here's the thing, you can have the sweeteners, but then you're also still, especially if you have an, a genetic predisposed position for diabetes, you can actually trigger a little bit of a bump in your blood sugar and you're gonna want more. It also triggers cravings. These are my opinions, some science behind a little bit of it, but um, I stay away from sugar alcohols because those are really, really bad for us and hard on our intestines and our digestive system. So that's my two cents on that. Oh, thank you, Jessica, for that compliment on my lipstick. Hey there, Alan. Good to see you on here. Thank you for saying hi. Um, yeah, so John, you know, here's what I use for a sweetener and maybe something to look into um, to try is monk fruit. Um, that's what I've been using. I get the granulated because um, it actually is a lot like sugar, but it doesn't bump your blood sugars. Um, zero calories, zero blood sugar effect. And I, I use such a little amount of it. It's very rare that I use it. Um, one of the recipes I made last night called for sugar, like a quarter, I think actually it was half a teaspoon of sugar. And so I use the monk fruit and you just don't know it. Like it's just, you just don't even know it. It was like a not a gravy but like a you boil it down it was like the scallions and um chicken broth and you know i'm trying to think it's not like a gravy but it's a reduction that's the word i'm looking for and it did ask for a sweetener and i probably could have not even put it in there but 
Uh, monk fruit is what I use. It's something that I've experimented with now for probably about six months. It doesn't cause any digestion issues. Um, and I do recommend it to my diabetic clients, but I love it. Yeah, I just cut back on sweets and never use sweeteners. I don't trust their definitions. Yeah, exactly. Like sweeteners are chemicals and, you know, all these scares about it causes cancer and, you know, messes with the brain. And yeah, I am agreeing on that. Now, a lot of those bars and proteins that you're going to buy at the box stores are going to be loaded with a bunch of that crap. So be very aware of that. Um, okay. I touch sugar and coffee, otherwise nothing else. Yeah, I would stay away from the sugar, Ellen. No sugar. Stay away from the sugar. But anyways, I really thought that was a great post that Travis posted um, about that visual. And then Loretta, she got really involved in it too. She's like, my environment has all of this junk food. Um, and I think actually, Loretta, you work in the medical industry too. And it's funny. Um, working with a lot of nurses, um, as clients as mine, um, and in fact, actually, I was at the grocery store this last week, and I don't know what they do, but they were in scrubs, and no judgments, but I watched what they put on the conveyor belt, and it was just soda, alcohol, um, chips, cookies, everything, and I was just like, ooh, it's, it's stress, lack of sleep, those long shifts that they're pulling. Um, you know, they walk in the store, they're probably famished and hungry and they're walking in and they're just sucked away with all the marketing. And that's what it is. It's totally marketing. You're lining the pocketbooks of, you know, these corporate CEOs that aren't eating that food. They know what's in it. They're like, no. Um, yeah. So that's another thing to think about. You know, what are what are we putting in our body? Um, you know, kind of one of the sayings I tell my clients all the time is 90% of what you eat should be fuel for your body. Um, shouldn't be, I'm eating this because it sounds good or it tastes good or I like the texture or I, you know, um, this is something I want. Um, it needs to be fuel for your body. If, you know, you really want to have a healthy body, want to live a long time and you want to live independently without being in a nursing home or someone taking care of you or fed a tube or whatever, um, if you want to live a long life, you need to 90% uh, of the time eat to fuel your body. Not for flavor, not for texture, not for enjoyment. Find enjoyment and pleasure in other areas of your life. Get a hobby. Uh, go out and uh, volunteer work. Um, do those things that you enjoy and love. Uh, crafts, arts. There's so much out there in this world to do, even with COVID. Don't use that as an excuse. That's lame. Um, you know, there's so much you can do and learn, you know, learning is so incredible for the brain. Um, and just find something you really love and enjoy and be a master at it. Like go out there and take classes, courses online if you need to because of COVID, but find your passion, find your joy and other things in food. Um, and teach your family that teach people around you that we can have fun without involving alcohol and, and food. You don't need to, um, you know, or be a designated driver. That's, you know, really cool too. All right. So, um, like vitamin water. Yeah. Don't drink vitamin water. Put that away. That's just loading. You're just paying tons of money for something. Um, honey is a no, no, um, fructose, fatty liver. Don't, uh, yeah, I'm not a smoothie fan either. Uh, but yeah, Stay away from the honey. Put the honey away. I'm sorry, all you beekeepers. My family used to keep bees, so I get it. But it super spikes your blood sugar. Um, so, yeah, honey is a major no-no. It's pure fructose. All right, guys, I'm trying to keep these videos under 15 minutes because I know that our attention spans are super short. Um, I know mine is. Uh, if I see a video that I'm like, oh my God, an hour, I'm not going to invest an hour in this. But if you need help, please reach out to me. Don't be shy. Private message me. Don't feel like you're bothering me because it's not. Um, I have a wellness app that I absolutely love. I'll give you one week free. You only got one opportunity to do that. And um, I'll monitor you for a week. I check on you twice a day, help you, teach you, give you a bunch of tips, and um, guide you through that whole week. Um, so just reach out to me, let me know when you want to start, or if you have questions, if you're confused, you have challenges or barriers that you just want help with, let me know. I am here for you. Otherwise, post your questions in the group. 
Um, let the group chime in. Um, post your funny memes or, you know, be real. This is your guys' community. Use this group to the fullest. So thank you, Annette. Yes, yes. Thank you for plugging the wellness app. Yes, yeah, she's on it. She loves it. She's doing great. Um, we have a call coming up. Yay, I saw you booked your call. All right. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. And as always, I'm here for you. All right. Bye.